It's Tuesday, November 16th. I'm Nick Roman with the afternoon edition of the L.A. Report from KPCC and LAist. Here are the stories we've been following today. L.A. County supervisors have appointed Reverend Andy Bales to the L.A. Homeless Services Authority Commission, the panel that makes policy and money decisions about how L.A. will get unhoused Angelinos off the streets. Bales heads up Skid Row's Union Rescue Mission, which provides shelter and services for about 1,000 people. He's also a critic of the Housing First strategy in Los Angeles that calls for permanent housing without conditions like requirements to stay sober. Reverend Bales says Housing First is too hands-off. I know people who are struggling with addiction slip and fall. And I don't believe they should be kicked out, but the goal should be to provide a sober environment and to address the addiction. Andy Bales at the Union Rescue Mission. He says emergency shelters, tiny homes, and other transitional housing can get more people off the street. The L.A. Unified School District put COVID-19 vaccination requirements in place for students and staff earlier this fall. Now, L.A. Unified is planning for the spring semester. Details from KPCC's Kyle Stokes. LAUSD is requiring all students age 12 and older to be vaccinated by the end of winter break. So starting in the spring semester, only unvaccinated students will be required to take weekly COVID-19 tests. That is, students age 12 or under or other students with medical exemptions. The district is also moving off of its hard and fast requirement that students wear masks anywhere on campus, including outdoors. If 85 percent of students on a campus are vaccinated, the district says that starting in the spring, students don't have to wear their masks outside. KPCC education reporter Kyle Stokes. Remember, we told you yesterday was supposed to be the first day that the twin ports of L.A. and Long Beach would start collecting fines from shipping companies that had left full cargo containers sitting at the ports for more than nine days. The idea is to help clear the supply chain jam. Well, now the ports won't start collecting those fines till next Monday. How come? Well, Port of L.A. Executive Director Gene Sirocco says it's because the shipping uh, shipping companies are making a lot of progress moving those containers. Three weeks ago, there were 95,000 on the docks in San Pedro. And after three weeks, while working a record number of ships by our great ILW men and women, we've reduced that by 29 percent on the aging cargo side. And all imports are down about 25 percent. Soroka also says there are 65,000 empty containers at the Port of L.A. that got to go. He says sweeper vessels are coming to take them away. Clearing containers is one step in clearing that supply chain jam. What about that move to 24-7 operations at the Port of L.A. that President Biden announced weeks ago? Well, the port's Gene Soroka says they're running 19 hours a day, but they can't move to 24-7 because warehouses down the supply chain aren't 24-7. The warehousing complex traditionally worked during the day, and they found it difficult to bring in workers during this time. On the trucking side, as we've explained before, drivers have a limit federally mandated of 11 hours behind the wheel every day, and if they work consecutively, they must take a rest. We need to add more drivers. And on that point, last week, the DMV said it would open its offices in Winnetka, Montebello, and Fullerton on Saturdays so they could give more commercial truck driver license tests. Passenger traffic at Ontario International Airport is nudging its way back to normal. The airport says it counted 494,000 air travelers last month. That was less than 2% below the total from the pre-pandemic days of October 2019. Eleven airlines fly out of Ontario, including Southwest and JetBlue. We are eight days away from our second pandemic Thanksgiving. Our first one, you remember, was largely unvaccinated, and all the indoor gatherings with family and friends triggered a frightening surge of COVID-19 infections. Now, of course, we have vaccines, but there is still a risk of infection. So how do you gauge risk at a holiday gathering? Dr. Timothy Brewer at the UCLA Geffen School of Medicine says, first, Think about proximity. Every three feet you move away from someone drops your risk of transmission by about 80% or more. Then consider time spent with someone. So the longer you're together, the more likely transmission is going to occur. The CDC uses a criteria of 15 minutes to define a, a close contact. 
then there's how infectious a person is. 80% of COVID-19 transmission is done by only 20% of those infected. You won't know who's in the 20%, but you sure know who's got a face mask on, and that reduces transmission. And then things like ventilation outdoors, much less likely than indoors. And of course, in Southern California, outdoors for Thanksgiving is easy and comfortable. UCLA's Dr. Timothy Brewer, he's one of the COVID-19 experts you hear daily on KPCC's Air Talk. Thanks for listening to the LA Report. I'm Nick Roman. Join us next time for another LA Report.